53. From the equilibrium concentrations given, calculate Ka for each of the weak acids and Kb for each of the weak bases. Then we have letter C. So in this case, they give us a compound, HCO2H. They tell us what that concentration is, 0.52 formularity. They told us we have an H3O plus concentration of 9.8 times 10 to the negative 3, and then an HCO2 minus concentration of 9.8 as times 10 to the negative 3. So the first thing is, is what are we dealing with? Are we dealing with a weak acid or a weak base? Because from there, we could figure out, are we finding out the Ka or the Kb value? Well, if you produce H3O plus in solution, right, that's hydronium. And hydronium is always made when you're starting off with an acid. So HCO2H would be classified as an acid. It's a weak acid because it's not on our list of six strong acids. And I kind of know that this is an acid because I do see that there's an H in the front. Usually H's at the front means that they're going to be acids. So I know that I'm going to solve for a Ka value here. So let's first write out the equation. Remember, acids and bases, they're always in water. So if you want to write the balanced equation, it would be HCO2H and then plus water. So we've done tons of problems like this trying to figure out how to write equations. And all we have to do is remember, this is formic acid and the acid will always lose its hydrogen. So you can get rid of it, and that's why it becomes this one. This one is the conjugate base, while the base gains a hydrogen, and that's why you get H3O+. So in this case, it would be HCO2- plus H3O+. Let's now write out the equilibrium concentrations that they gave us. So they told us that my HCO2H is 0 0.524 molarity. And then each one of these, HCO2 minus and HCO plus, they're both 9.8 times 10 to the negative third molarity. So 9.8 times 10 to the negative third molarity. But now the question is, well, what happened to the water? Why didn't they give me a number for the water? Remember, a water is a liquid, and no liquids or solids are allowed in any K value. Ka, Kb, Kc, Kp. No liquids are allowed. So in this case, remember, any K value is just going to be products raised to the coefficients divided by the reactants. So in this case, I have Ka equals products, which are these guys, divided by reactants. And remember, if you have two products, they're multiplied by each other in the formula. They are not um, additive. So I'm just going to add these brackets. So it's going to be HCO2 minus times H3O plus, because those are your two products, divided by your one reactant, HCO2H. OK. Whoop. All right. Now let's just plug in the numbers. So Ka actually equals the two numbers on the top times by the one number on the bottom. So I get 9.8 times 10 to the negative third times 9.8 times 10 to the negative third. And remember, you can only put molarity concentrations in here. So we're good to go. And now we're just going to find out the Ka. So Ka equals 9.8 times 10 to the negative third times 9.8 times 10 to the negative third. And then I'm going to divide by 0.524. Looks like if I want to play sig figs, I have two as my lowest. So I'm just going to say 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. So it's pretty weak. It's not close to 1. So remember, any k value that is less than 1, that just means at equilibrium, you have way more of your undissociated acid. And look at the numbers. I mean, 0.524 versus 9.8 times 10 to the negative 3. It does make sense that you would have more of this, giving the Ka value that we just found. And that's it. I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know uh, what's going on in the comments. Love to talk to you guys. Hope you're having a great day. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.